Good morning, everybody. As you can see, it's done, at least the base model. So the Jeep that I've been designing and working on for a long time is finally, everything's printed um, for the base model. The uh, doors are functional. Wheels roll. So, now time to talk about what to do with it in the future as far as um, modular upgrades, things I have in, in, uh, in store for it already, things that maybe I haven't thought about yet. <laughs> so we got uh, Techno Geek this morning, we got uh, Mike, Never Let the Machines Win, and we got uh, 3D Medic Vince. Hope you guys are doing well this morning. And uh, thank you, Mike. I appreciate that, man. It's uh, it's it's still overwhelming to me a, a little bit. Um, you know, I, I had that that sense a little bit when when building the truck, but because the truck got broken before it ever got finished, I never really got that that you know that sense of completion. And uh, now, holding this in my hand, and everything working out is uh, really <laughs> it's 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 this really uh, strong sense of accomplishment you know when you've got something that you designed that started from a, a cube in the middle of a screen and has you know come to life and you can hold it in your hands is insane to me really uh, you, you know, it's it's. I always dreamed of uh, you know designing my own toys as a as a avid toy collector and and uh, enthusiast, and uh, this is just really cool to me. Good morning, trolling for dollars and David Olson. How are you guys doing? I I did order uh, yesterday. I ordered a couple rolls of filament because uh, this one kind of pays homage to the uh, the G.I. Joe vamp was its inspiration. Now it looks nothing like a vamp, but it kind of, you know, draws a lot of the same uh, functionality and cues from, from the vamp. Um, the vamp did not have doors. Um, <laughs> and design-wise, considerably different. And this is larger than a vamp, a lot larger. Um, you can see I've got a figure seated in in the driver's seat and he's holding the steering wheel the steering wheel fits in his hand um, the rolls of film I ordered are uh, colors to pay homage to the vamp mark II with the next version of the Jeep good morning mr. Buttram how you doing Ryan and as you can see the, the Jeep is done and that filament that you sent me was used to uh, print the body and the wheels and and it was perfect man thank you thank you um, so I ordered uh, I ordered the colors to uh, print the next one to pay homage to the vamp mark II. Um, things that need to happen with this one to finish paying homage to the vamp is I need to uh, I need to create a, a uh, turret and a thing to enclose the the rear and so I've been working on on that um, I haven't started the turret yet which uh, maybe we maybe we start on that today I don't know um, yeah the filament it, it and it printed awesome I you know I I, I may need to actually uh, shoot some actual video and record it and edit together my first video and do a filament review for it because uh, I've never seen anybody printing with um, Seagate and filament, but it uh, it was awesome. You know, it did. Uh, it was very, very easy to print with, and the results came out spectacular. So, um, and that's a that you know qualifies itself as a very hard to find color. Morning, Scalda. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And Mike Whaley. 
So let's see here. Let me get let me pull up Blender. Pull up Blender and move this over here. And let's go to the screen share. So I can show you guys um, a major iteration that has already been put into play. Um, a four door version. <laughs> now, um, this is the rear clip that I was talking about that, that will uh, cover up that open rear area, and that's where I will mount the turret, is in the middle of that. Um, still needs a lot of detailing and things like that. This is just the uh, kind of blank slate. And I may use this blank slate to make multiple versions of things that can be put on the back. Um, make one that just has like a trunk lid that opens and closes and uh, then it could be used as, as a trunk so if I made you know civilian versions and then as you can see there's a uh, a removable hard top that has been designed as well and it still um, this piece that sticks out maintains the ability to clip the uh, the little lights on on the roof So, lots of stuff to do still. Um, I never did print the lights that clip on the grill guard, but they're the same lights that go across the back, and, and it's the same dimensions, so it's it's really not a big deal. Um, I'll get around to it at some point. So, yeah, there's a four-door version already in the works. Um And the next one I want to print in the Vamp Mark II colors, which is our, which are that uh, um, it's a military khaki brown. So I um, I forget who directed me to them, but Paramount Filament sells a military khaki brown. So I ordered a roll a uh, one kilogram of that, and then I ordered uh, also from Paramount Filament a graphite gray. So it's a dark gray. Um, I'll be interested to see what that looks like because the uh, Vamp Mark II's colors are, are pretty much that. And so um, the turret I have to design. I have to design a turret that I can uh, I can design a dual gun turret for the Vamp and a missile launcher turret for the Mark II. The Ideal situation will be to design a turret to accept different weaponry so that I would have a base model turret and then you just print out and clip on either the guns or the missile launcher or, you know, and, you know, come up with several different um, things that can be added to it. So that's, uh, that's where I'm at now, but I've never been good at designing guns. For some reason, I've just never been good at designing designing guns. So um, that's going to be the the hurdle for me. There is designing a gun that when I'm done, I like the look of it. You know, because um, I had designed one for the first version of the VSV that I started with, which was the very first thing I designed in Blender. But I hated the gun. I hated it when I was done. I, I didn't like it at all. So um, I need to revisit that idea. Um, I do have the roof that you see here um, ready to, to be sliced and printed for the two-door version and it just clips on where the uh, clips onto the roll bar right where the the lights that are on the roll bar clip on. But then it gives you the spot to clip the lights onto the roof instead of the roll bar. And then I also need to print. They're they're sliced and ready to ready to be printed. Um, and in fact, I were was printing them the the upper door piece here, which tabs into the a slot at the top of the door, 
on the inside of the door. Um, I was printing them yesterday. I had all three printers running, and that was during uh, Mike's stream yesterday. And then all of a sudden, everything went dark. And I thought I had lost power, like to the whole house. That's what I thought because my computer went off, all three printers went off, and light went off. I'm sitting in the dark, and I'm going, uh, okay. So I, I look around, and that's when I noticed the, the light was on in the uh, bathroom down the hall, and I went, oh, we didn't lose power. I just tripped a breaker. Tripped a breaker and killed three prints simultaneously. <laughs> so I, I don't know... Um, what I'm going to do there because this whole room is on the same circuit. So I don't know. I'm apparently having the PC and all three printers running at the same time. Oh, and a fan all running at the same time was too much. So, <sighs> is what it is. Cool. Figure it out. Yeah, I think I need to get a UPS, and, um, or a couple of them, <laughs> and, and plug all the printers into UPSs. And that way, if I trip a breaker again, I would have a few minutes to run and, and flip the breaker back before the, the print failed. <laughs> yeah, yeah that probably. Um, although... I don't think the X1, I, I think the X1 could run off the same one as the A8, really, because the X1 does not have a heated bed. It's a 12 volt, 5 amp power supply, you know. Um. <laughs> Gotta move to another room. Uh, either that or uh, I'll have to splice into. Uh, see, now my son's room is on a different circuit which is on the other side of this wall. So I don't know, maybe uh, get an electrician in here and, and have him wire in a uh, an outlet that is running off of that circuit. And then I could run the computer on that circuit since the computer is sitting against this wall and then the printers would be on their own circuit. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know what the ANET is, power supply-wise. Let me see. Does it say on the power supply somewhere? It does. It's on the back side of the power supply. But I can't see it. It's 12 volt 20 amp. <sighs> So yeah, 300 watts between the two. I, I think I think they would be able to run on one UPS for long enough for me to run to the garage and flip the breaker. Right, yeah, there there is uh, two outlets on his wall, on the wall that that the two rooms share. So I mean, it would be easy, but I don't. I don't mess with, I don't mess with electricity. <laughs> I got, I got bit once real good when I was like 12 and, and from there it gave me that, uh, I get the heebie jeebies when I work around electricity. Like whenever I'm working on a car, I will disconnect the battery, uh, before I do anything. <laughs> Yeah, the, the only printer that I trust to run when I'm not here is the S4. Uh, I let the S4 run. when I, I, I will go to sleep or leave the house, whatever, and I let the S4 run. The S4 doesn't scare me in the least. Um, the X1 wouldn't scare me if it weren't for the fact that every once in a while it just loses power because it has a short in the uh, cord. And... Uh, when it does that, it leaves the hot end sitting right on the part. 
Morning, Don. Yeah, I got I got bit once real real good by electricity when I was like 12 years old and and from that point forward I was gun shy around electricity. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah, um I haven't I haven't ordered any yet, but Paramount it makes a Decepticon purple that looks gorgeous. I like it and uh I Sure, they haven't gotten the rights from Hasbro to actually use the Decepticon name, but they, <laughs> but they have Decepticon Purple, which I, I love. It looks awesome. I would like to get some. Um, I don't have anything that I need to print with it right now, so it, it, it can wait. But their prices aren't horrible. They're around 20 bucks a roll. And uh, I think I paid 23 because uh, I, I got this stuff on eBay, so I use my PayPal balance. Um I think I paid 23 for the military khaki brown and then 20 for the graphite gray. And I think they were just raising the price a little bit on the khaki because they were almost out of it. Morning, Ben. Yeah, uh, there's a company, uh, and I just ordered two rolls of their filament uh, called Paramount. And they have a Decepticon purple, which looks really cool. See if I can just drag this over here. Paramount Decepticon Purple PLA. There it is. Oh. Well that listing ended, but Oh, that's ABS there. Also like the looks of their uh, iron red. The military khaki, that's what I ordered. Huh. 200 grams. That that color change filament looks cool. Mount PLA 1.75. The graphite gray, that's what I uh, ordered yesterday. It was graphite gray. And it was nineteen ninety nine when I ordered it yesterday. McLaren orange, iron red. The iron red might be cool. It looks like a good, uh, good color for printing brick when I get to uh, doing the the buildings, um, the building system. They got a nice dark military green, which looks good, too. Stealth gray looks almost black. I looked at it. Yeah, the British racing green looked cool. I like that, too. Well, there's a, uh, there's a sample pack that's, like, crazy. It was a, uh, they're just small rolls. But, you know, you get a maker coin off of each one, I suppose. 36 colors. Yeah, you're probably right, Mike. Yeah, there's the Caribbean coral that uh, Mr. Buttram's talking about. They got some nice colors. Um, 
their skin universal beige. They look, don't look too bad. Black cherry. They've got some, you know, they got some neat colors. Although their their gold just from the pictures seems to suffer the same thing I see for most people's golds. It doesn't look like an actual gold. Um, gold happens looks like uh, the, the the best gold I've seen so far. Volcano orange, primordial earth. It's kind of a cool color. Leviathan blue green. They got some interesting names. Ooh, I like that cadet blue. Heather from 3D Pink Mafia would like that uh, Harajuku pink. <laughs> yeah, protopo most of Protopasta's filaments look amazing. The, the thing that, that gives me a little pause with them is everyone says you need to run an oiler with their with their filament and <laughs> yeah, don't don't no, no. <laughs> we 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 don't want to see you go to jail, Ryan. <laughs> oh look at that Enzo red. That is a bright red oh, I like that battleship gray too and the concrete gray would be perfect to print my uh, guard check man I'm like a kid in a candy store right now I would like to order several of these don't have the money don't have the money gotta wait oh Autobot blue Again, I'm sure they didn't get permission from Hasbro to use Decepticon Purple or Autobot Blue. So, Hawk, have you had to uh, have you had to run an oiler with the filament? Because I've had several people say that it doesn't print well without oiling the filament, and I don't. <laughs> yeah, um, they've just got they've got so many really cool colors. I'll I, I'll wait and see how the the two or, rolls I ordered from them print before I pass judgment. But they got some great colors. See, I haven't had any any trouble with. Uh, Knock on wood. Any jams or clogged nozzles <laughs> yet? Yeah, there are several colors there that I would like to have. That cadet blue kind of has a denim color to it. Anyway. We're getting off topic. <laughs> Easy to do. Get a, get a look at pretty filament colors. And, ooh. <laughs> so yeah, um, with the Jeep being done, I, I don't know if uh, printing the, the four-door version is the next, next logical step or if I should just keep moving forward with uh, modules and add-ons for the, the two-door model. Oh yeah, you didn't see that? Oh yeah, you you liked the uh, post on, on Twitter. But... but there she is. Everything uh, everything glued down and solid that's meant to be. The doors are removable. 
You can take the doors off. So somebody who wants to print the doors in a different color could do so because they're a separate piece. They're also removable. You know, like a like a real Jeep. They don't move the same way the doors do from a real Jeep. Which, no, I have not glued this on, and that is because I have a couple of uh, um, design things that I want to do that I don't want to have to print a whole nother Jeep just to test. <laughs> so, um, that's why this has not been glued down yet. <laughs> Found your A8 buried in the back. So yeah, I'll uh, save this. And open recent. So you can see that I had already done the, the roof and the back um so hide the roll bar hide this hide that roof um i'd started working on this sort of roof and then i'm going to put a cap over the top as well but uh, gives it kind of a, a Bronco kind of look to it a little bit so that's some of the things that I'm you know playing with you got food poisoning Ben that's that's no good man But yeah, I, I've tried to make everything, as I'm going, modular. So that making different versions, whenever I release this to uh, to the public, people will be able to just download and print out the parts that they want and make the Jeep the way they want to make their Jeep. Um, here's the one where I do all my crazy playing around. That's what the lift kit I've designed. <laughs> Those tires would take some time to print because they're going to be huge. But, uh, <laughs> the lift kit is just a matter of, you know, so you would decide whether you wanted the stock suspension height or you wanted the lifted suspension height. And so when you download it, you would download whether you wanted to download the, the axles that put it at the stock height or the lifted axles. And then the only difference is you'd print out the larger tires instead of the small tires. So you just print a different axle and different tires, and bang, you got a lift kit. You got a lifted Jeep. I've been thinking I need to uh, model up a couple of uh, uh, jerry cans that slide down in those little uh, storage spots. Oh, and this was something I was playing around with too. That could change the look. 
you wanted to. I've been thinking about and, and how I would engineer it, some sort of uh, clip-on fender flare kit for the uh, lifted version, since the tires are a little bit wider and bigger. And I've got so many things that that I need to print, and I'm wondering if I shouldn't just, you know, start slicing up and printing those other things while I continue adding modules to the Jeep. There's just not enough days in the week and not enough hours in the day. Um, because today is my one day where I'm completely off. But, you know, so there's only so much I can do one day a week when I'm completely off. Um, I'm off tomorrow except for my uh, Facebook music live stream that I do every Wednesday. My dog's enjoying looking out the window. I don't know, at some point I guess I should print out that little uh, hood add-on accessory and see what it looks like in the real world. Well, um, how does Twitch handle the whole, you know, doing cover songs thing? Like, that's the reason I can't do it on YouTube, because YouTube gets angry at cover songs. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, I could make a uh, I could make a police version of this, like make a light, uh, you know, model a light bar to go on the uh, the removable roof. And print like the roof and the doors in white and print the rest of the body in black. Of course, I don't have any white. I mean, white. Is that crazy? I don't have any white PLA. But, uh, yeah, so, <clears throat> I guess we will, let's start new. Ah, control new. Uh, isometric view. Uh, let's scale it down. Well, yeah, I, can, I mean, you know, tends to be more forgiving. You know, issues in music. Yeah, see. I, I would just, I would worry about getting in trouble for doing cover songs. I'm like, <laughs> and I, you know, I've only got so many originals. And, and if I, if I only did originals, then it would be, uh, you know, while I could do the hour 
call a regional. It would be the same hour almost every week. <laughs> I'd have to start writing a whole lot more songs. Okay. Sing a song about pickles. <laughs> Morning, Jake. So I need to look at some reference images because, like I said, I'm, I'm no good at designing weapons. I'm just not. Uh, gun turret. Look at some reference images and get some ideas. I like pickles too, Jake. They're good. Oh, that's cool. Something like that would look cool on the back of that Jeep. Hmm. It's this website here. Oh, there is, but I like the, uh, I like the turret. I like that turret a lot. And so obviously, you know, I don't want to copy anybody exact, but that gives me gives me some idea. I like the aesthetic of that. I don't know. Let's play with it and see what we can come up with. Ring cut. I don't want to copy anybody exact, so let's uh, set the faces. You know what I should be doing for you guys? I should be doing Script, 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 script. Text editor right there. Bang. Open. On the desktop. 
open text block, run script, back to 3D view, current display. There we go. Morning, Joe Paddock and Matt Johnson. Now you guys can see what I'm doing better. Extrude scale. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Hmm. Zimmy, good morning. Um, beginnings of a uh, turret for the back of the Jeep.
but I feel like I've already kind of gotten off off from where I wanted. <laughs> I told you I'm no good at making weapons. I'm just not. Just not my thing. I was using, taking some aesthetics that I liked about that and then just trying to make something that's all my own. But failing miserably. <clears throat> True, Matt Johnson, true.
On a red light. Uh, attempting to make a turret weapon for the back of the Jeep. <laughs> yeah. It's just too bad I really, I'm not good at making weapons. Like that. Just not my thing. So now I'm going to add a mirror modifier. I moved the uh, that's only going to work on the one. Huh? Okay, so hold on. Join these. Um, two, 
Joy, 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 joy. Show that. Joy. There you go. Chris Riley, good morning, sir. <sighs> Modeling stuff this morning. We're attempting to make a turret for the, the back of the Jeep, which the Jeep is finished, which Chris Riley wouldn't know that because he's not on Twitter. <laughs> See, there's, there's things you miss out on not being on Twitter. The Jeep is done. Wheels roll. Doors open and close. <laughs> oh hey Bill and uh, John you do it is not here <sighs> longer and thicker barrel hey, yeah it might be necessary before it's all said and done but I may just shorten the overall body here a little bit. Um, right now I'm trying to control alt shift C, origin to 3D cursor, add modifier mirror, not on the X, on the Y, nope, on the Y, Z, on the Z, okay. And then apply. Uh, nice. Um, the control minus thing I just did there, that's part of the, uh, the hard ops plugin that I purchased for Blender. Handles booleans. But the weird thing is, like until you apply them, they're they're only visible here. And it keeps the wireframe of stuff visible. But yeah, that's kind of what I was going for with those. Grab these. Z. <laughs> Morning, Robbie. Oh, trying to uh, design a turret. Not real happy with it yet, but I'll keep working at it. Maybe I will get happy with it. I was hoping Fernando would show up this morning. I received a package in the mail from him yesterday. I wanted to... That, that was waiting for me in my makerspace when I got home. Ring cut. 
Mm -hmm. Scale those out. Blow the Y. But yeah, all the stuff I'm doing here, with the exception of the hard ops stuff that I've done, is all stuff that I showed you in the Blender Basics video. So even though I'm not totally happy with this design, <laughs> it uh, it shows you that that the stuff that I showed you in the Blender's ba Blender Basics video. Which, the stuff that I did here with hard ops, the booleans, you can do them with regular booleans. Which I showed you in the Blender Basics. Um, they just shorten it up to make it quick key presses. And I'm still learning how to do a lot of this stuff. Let's see. Nope. Went that. <laughs> Robbie Mac gets excited around guns. But yeah, I need to uh, I need to design I'm I'm trying to design a turret for the back of the for the back of the Jeep and I figured I'd start with the guns. Can <sighs> stop you out of this morning. Had a show last night. The show went miserably because Luke Bryan put on a free concert out in the street during my shift. My shift started at 6.15. His uh, free concert started at 6.30. He was still on stage. He was on stage himself when, when my shift ended at 10.15. So all the people that were in downtown Nashville were all out at Luke Bryan's free street concert and not in the bars, tipping the musicians who make their living off tips. Because they can go watch Luke Bryan for free. Why are they going to tip some guy they've never heard of? I think Luke has, uh, didn't think through or didn't care, one of the two, that none of the musicians who were working last night 6 to 10 the 6 to 10 shift area. None of the bartenders that were working the 6 to 10 shifts last night made any money at all. Luke didn't care. Kind of stuff happens in Nashville, though. You know, some big name hotshot does something that, you know, takes away from us. Because the big name Hotshot has forgot what it's like to be us. Um, Dirks Bentley took over a shift at Legends Corner one night. Um, they called the band that was, that was supposed to play and just told them that they weren't going to be playing. And, uh, that Dirk Bentley was taking their shift. and But then Dirk's earned mad respect for me because he took over that band's four-hour shift at Legends Corner. But during the night, he himself went out in the crowd and passed the tip bucket. And all of the money he collected went to the band that he took their shift. And the band, you know, the band didn't know that was going to happen. They thought they were just out the shift. 
And so when they showed up to their shift the next week, they had an envelope with over $1,000 cash waiting for them that Dirks had collected for them. Which I thought was really cool. So they got the night off and they made some money. Yeah, I'm sure Luke, it didn't enter into Luke's mind one second that he was screwing everybody that was working on Broadway that night, last night. He didn't care. Didn't enter his mind. All he cared about was promoting his new bar that's opening up on, on Broadway. Yeah, a lot of people weren't real pleased last night, myself included. I'm normally a pretty easygoing guy when it comes to that stuff, but I did think that to be a little bit uh, selfish on his part. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, let's just do this. <clears throat> so I need to think about how I'm going to mount this on the turret. Because what I'm going to do is I want to have the, the turret base and then the arms that come off the turret. And then design it so that you can clip a gun or missile launcher, whatever, and they're interchangeable. Try to keep with the modular nature of a design. I don't know if I just make a... hole in the side that... and then make pegs on the arms of the turret. And then that peg would be the tilting mechanism. Or if I mount the T on the turret so that it is the tilting mechanism. And then these just peg in in a non-moving way. Let's see. You know what we haven't done yet? We haven't saved. We haven't saved. I tripped a breaker in here yesterday. I could do it again. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I'm not running any printers right now. I didn't want to trip a breaker during the stream. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, 
weapons. Uh, turret gun. Fernando, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Fernando Pena. Good morning. Fernando. Okay. <laughs> this was sitting in my maker space when I got home. And I guess my wife wanted to see what it was because she tore it open. Because <laughs> it was already open when I got home. She's she probably like, what the heck is this? So, as many of you know, Fernando got some 3D pins. And he sent a couple to me. And I appreciate it. They're low temp 3D pens. Um, they use uh, PCL filament, which I've never seen. So, yes, they made it. I uh, I plan on, on keeping one and using one. And then uh, we'll figure out something to give the other one away for. And maybe that, maybe that's what, you know, I said that I would like to, uh, I would like to get some sort of design contest going for you guys. And maybe that could be the prize for that. Because I want to get, the whole point of this channel was to get people designing. People who don't normally design or, or, or maybe never touched Blender was to get them, get them to pull up Blender and and do some designing. And so, uh, yeah, I, you know, I do want to keep one of these from for for myself, something for to, to, to play with and, and my son to potentially play with as well. But uh, give the other one away. And I've been wanting to get you guys designing. So maybe that's a good prize for that. So what I was thinking is, I'll I'll get the specifics figured out. But now that the uh, the Jeep is done, um, I need to go and clean up some stuff to get rid of the extra stuff that's in there and have just the the base model of the Jeep in the file. But maybe I put the file up on my website. Uh, over on Tanner3D.com, which I haven't been keeping up with good. Uh, but I, I post it over there so that people can download it, download the Blender file for it, and then uh, you design custom pieces for the Jeep. And then we have a contest for who designed the best custom modular piece. Yeah, this is the uh, this is PCL only. It's a low temp. Uh, says consumable material PCL, one point seven five millimeter. Power input five volt two amp. Yeah, it's the SL400A. So yeah, Sunlu SL400A 3D printing pen. I don't know. Maybe I'll find I'll find some uh, filament a filament pack for it somewhere out on on Amazon or something, and and order that and can bundle that with the with the pen. So then you get the pen and, and some filament and. And do that as a giveaway. So, um, yeah, we'll start uh, figuring out the process there. But I think, uh, and maybe I don't do the Jeep. Maybe I do one of my other vehicles. But uh, 
get you guys designing something so I can, you know, have a contest where you download the Blender file and your your uh, objective is to to make module part modular parts, um, you know, upgrades and, and stuff like that for the Jeep, and uh, leave it up to your imagination and uh, your design capabilities, and then we get the entrance in and we put them up for people to vote on them and the winner gets the pen and, and the filament. Two small samples in the box. Hmm. Oh, okay. It's not bad. <laughs> you know, I I think I, you know, Blender imports all sorts of stuff. Um Blender can import DAE, ABC, 3DS, FBX, BVH, PLY, OBJ, X3D, WRL, STL, and SVG. So those are all files that can be imported into Blender. <laughs> YouTube thinks you're attacking somebody. <laughs> so thank you, thank you for that, Fernando. I, I, you know, I'll play with play with the one for sure, and then, like I said, I'll use the other one for for a giveaway, and I think. Uh, It'll be a good giveaway for, for a contest thing, so. Well, yeah. I don't really care what you design it in as long as, you know, it gets you guys to design it. And there are so many places that, that you can make changes to the Jeep because it's all it's all modular you know as far as um, different roll bar designs different things that clip on the roll bar um, a different interior you know to be glued in instead of this interior different wheels and tires uh, the grill guard um, just pegs into the front bumper so you could do something different you can make different bumpers um, there's slots for something to peg into the rear bumper. So the the whole point as I was designing this was was to make everything modular so it's interchangeable. Like you know, different doors is a matter of just simply design something different to go in the slots in right there. So there's all sorts of possibilities. And as I get the turret ready, you could do different turret weapons. You could do all sorts of stuff. So I don't, you know, I've, I've like I said, I've got 
I've had this idea for a while. Um, I I only have mild fears about sharing like the Jeep design, like the original file <laughs> with people and letting them do what they want with it. But so there is some mild concern there um, because I'm not a hundred percent sure moving forward with the Jeep what I what I plan to do with it. But I don't know, you know. I, I guess I should look at this um, approach just the same way I do, you know, songwriting. You know, I, I I write songs and I sing them to people all the time, and someone could steal those song ideas. They could, you know, and and say it's theirs and and all that kind of stuff. But if I can't if I can't write a better one tomorrow, then what kind of songwriter am I? Um, There you go, Robbie Mac. Make a clip-on wing kit for it. Yeah, I could do that. I could do dimensions and not the file. Or... I could make it specific to which parts are up for the contest and put just those parts up. Like, um, like if you want to design your own grill, I could provide you with just the, the original grill. And using that, you would have all your dimensions and stuff necessary. I could provide just the bumpers because if I don't provide every piece of it then you know it wouldn't necessarily be easy to uh, copy the rest I don't know like I said still thinking it over You need to get a lazy Susan to show stuff off with, and I can just put on lazy Susan and spin it. <laughs> yeah, that's another idea. But they still have the uh, things necessary to, uh, to to modify. Yeah, I don't know, and and maybe I don't use the Jeep. Maybe I use something else. But I, I still, you know. I, this is going to take a little time for me to, to, to get it all put together anyway. So, um, just kind of spitballing right now. But it would be kind of cool to see what, uh, what kind of ideas the community would come up with and, and design and then Then you could take uh, renders of what it's going to look like, you know, on, and then uh, I don't know. Then then after we choose a winner, we we you know I could sit down and three D print their their upgrade. And, and put it on the Jeep and see we'd see it in the real world then.
and I would take all the uh, finalists and I could open them up and uh, make sure they slice and all that kind of stuff because part of the uh, the being a finalist would be it has to be manifold and ready for print because one of the uh, one of the challenges of designing stuff in blender is is making sure things are manifold before you you export the STL and I've showed in my videos before how to get the 3d printing toolbox and how to use it to check everything which as you can see the thing I've designed so far zero non-manifold edges which means it thus far would print fine I don't know if that's making it too difficult for people to say that their design not only has to look cool, but also, you know, actually be printable. But you know, that's that's the whole point of this this design is to get get people designing stuff that can be three D printed, and you know, someone who doesn't have experience doing that, someone who like designs game models, for instance, game models are not manifold; they don't have to be. So they may have experience designing game models, but a game model is not 3D printable necessarily. It could be. I haven't looked at my stream health lately. And look. Yeah, it's saying my stream health is not good. I am in the yellow. So that definitely could be on my end. I've not restarted this computer for several days. That could be part of the problem. <laughs> that and I'm running Blender and I've still got Cure open. Because I, uh, I test sliced the bottom piece, the frame, for the four-door Jeep. Um, which Cura has it at 16 hours and 16 minutes using 179 grams of filament. So yeah, this piece right here. So that, and that definitely would not be possible without the uh, CR10S4, because as you can see here in Kira, even the S4's build plate is getting pretty full. <laughs> There's only a little bit more length that could be without having to cut it up into multiple pieces. If I make an even even longer version, I'll have to slice the frame into multiple pieces and and make them uh, so that you glue them together. Uh, either that, or I got to build an FK1. <laughs> but just looking at my, I was looking at my room the other day, going, I "Wonder how long the FK one is if I could fit one right here." <laughs> I don't know what the overall frame length is on the FK one. Anybody know? I asked Glenn the other day in the fun in the country basement stream. He didn't answer me.
Well, I mean, the, the build volume on, on the S4 is 400 by 400 by 400, so it's not going to really matter. Just under five feet on the... Because that's, that's what I'm talking about, is, is how much wall space do I, do I need? <laughs> if I want to, if I want to squeeze one into this room, um, the two door one will definitely print on a regular CR10 because the the two door one was just like literally ten millimeters too long to print on the A8. So a regular CR-10 will print the two-door model, no problem. I don't know about the four-door. So yeah, Fernando, like your your Alpha Wise U20 would would print every piece to the Jeep, no problem. The four-door one, I don't know. Uh, let's see, what's the... Kira tells you. Oh, yeah, it should fit. Um, the length is 278 millimeters on the four-door. So a 300 build plate should fit it. So, yeah, looks like you could print the two-door or the four-door. The four-door has not been tested yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, because you need at least 280 millimeters to fit the biggest piece. And and the, the frame, the bottom, is the biggest piece. Um, somebody with a smaller printer could take it in a mesh mixer and slice it, and then you would have to rejoin the frame. The, the thing that I would worry about there is that um, the bottom frame is the thing that's going to take the most stress. So if you had a slice in this someplace, unless you put good registration marks and, and, and glued it really solid or glued some reinforcement to it, that's what's going to fail. That's you know, if it's being used under under load. Now you could glue it pretty easily and just set it on a shelf to look at, and it wouldn't be a problem. I don't see that as as being an issue if you're not actually going to put it through the rigors of you know handling it a lot. Oh, you, you're watching, you got uh, internet set up in your Kara studio. Awesome, dude. Yeah, trolling, that would, that would probably work. I don't know, I may go back and make a version of the frame for smaller printers. Right. So, yeah, I, I may go back and make a, a version of the frame that can be printed on a smaller printer and just requires a little more assembly. Um, because my my A8 will print everything, can print everything but the frame. Not that I'd want the A8 running for 16 consecutive hours. <laughs> which is what the the four door frame is going to be 16 hours and 16 minutes according to Kira which that always seems to be uh, an underestimation
I'm going to say no. It would not fit even diagonally as one piece on the A8. So, yeah, there would have to be some modification done to the frame um, to print it on a smaller printer. But, I mean, it's doable. I would just hate to lose that rigidity because this thing is, this frame is solid. I mean, very solid. And I think anytime you're, you're talking about, you know, making something multiple pieces, now it has a, a point of failure. And you can probably still make it pretty tough, but you'll never make it as tough as one solid piece. Which is the thing that excited me so much about having a, a large volume printer is, you know, all of my stuff now, I don't have anything that won't fit that I've designed so far that won't fit on the S4. Makes me a very happy guy. So I don't know. I may uh, I may may start printing on a on on a four door one while I continue working on on the turret designs and and things like that. Because then uh, I got more filament coming. It should be here Friday, but that's what the eBay order says: is that it be delivered by Friday. <laughs> By Friday the 14th. Which I'll be anxious to try that because I haven't printed with Paramount filament before. Give that a go. Um, I would like to print a, a another two-door version of the Jeep and and do a uh, more civilian-minded, maybe a race Jeep, you know, all sorts of ideas. Um, I'd like to do a police version. I need to order some white filament. But now that I've got the design whittled down to uh, all the base parts work, you know, the base model parts work, um, it's just a matter of printing the parts. And assembly, yeah, assembly requires gluing. But, you know, once I heat up my glue gun, that only takes a couple seconds <laughs> to assemble once all the parts are printed. And running three printers at a time I can print almost everything in just two or three days so that uh, certainly within the realm of possibility because I can print you know I can print the like if I started today if I started a new one today right now I would fire up the X1 running wheels, the A8 running tires, um, and the uh, S4 running the frame. Then when I got the wheels off of the X1, I would put it, set it in on on axles. And when I got the tires off the A8, I'd set it in on a, on the interior. And then when the frame got done, it would start printing body on uh, the S4. And then I could print things like the roll bar and the window frames and, and things like that on the A8 when it got done with the interior. 
you know, so um, it's just a matter of I had to split it up differently than that without sw swapping filaments over uh, last time. So the S4 ended up handling the lion's share of, of the print because um, I even printed like the the window frame and the roll bar and the grill and the little accessory lights and stuff on the S4 because I, I had had that color loaded up for the frame and so the silver uh, was loaded up for the frame so after I got in with the frame I had the S4 print all the accessories and, and things that were going to be in silver next before I did the filament swap so then in the filament swap to the green and printed all the body um, the A8 has just handled all the black stuff, so all the black parts. So it handled the tires and the uh, seats and the dash. The X1 started off with the green and it handled the uh, the wheels and the steering wheel. <laughs> Because I wasn't patient enough to wait for the A8 to get done to print the steering wheel in black. But I think it actually turned out looking kind of cool having the steering wheel in the green. Kind of makes it pop and stand out a little bit. And the X1 did a decent job with it considering it's such a tiny print. I guess the uh, steering wheel would actually probably be best suited to be printed with an SLA printer, as small as it is, to get that level of detail and that size without but the thing that took longest of anything was the doors because I had to keep iterating the design but now that I've got the design knocked out on those and they they work they do what they're supposed to do it's just a matter of printing them and they're only a two and a half hour print um, so the frame is the longest print. Um, I think it was 12, 13 hours. <laughs> well, you'd have to do a rear view mirror too to hang it off of because there, there are no mirrors on the, on the Jeep. plain cut is but where is the adjustable cut um, you can use blender to slice you're using blender um, create plane rotate 90 degrees. X. Okay. So you can use Blender. Scale it down here. Say I wanted to slice this roof. I could take this plane, select the roof, and I don't do this very often, so let me give me a second. Um, I recommend installing the add-on bool tools. It's free. It only takes a second to install it. So in your user preferences, uh, under add-ons, install bool tools. You can do slice. That's it. Um, to cut it. And then say I wanted a different shape, wanted to slice a different shape. Just tab in here. Let's ring cut it. Scale it along the X in. Bool tools. B O O L T O O L S. Bool tools. <clears throat> so, yeah, it, it's the same process. If you had a different shape you're wanting to slice out of it, see, I just modified the shape of that to now have this 
thing to it. You select the select the plane you want or the object you want to use to slice the other object first. Then select the object you're wanting to slice second. Select slice. See, I just made that shape of a cut right through there. Um, create. Let's do a cylinder. Scale down. So say, here we go, for instance, again, tools, down here to bull tools, slice. See, I sliced a circle. It doesn't matter what the shape is, it doesn't have to be a plane. So yeah, it doesn't have to be a plane. Whatever whatever two parts you join together, you can use the slice command in bool tools. And you slice the first it's slicing the first object you selected from the second object you selected. And so again, where you find bool tools, if you don't have it yet, is you go up to file, go to user preferences, or you can control alt U to go to user preferences. You go to add-ons. The add-ons tab here and you just type in bool and it'll come up right there object bool tool check the little box and click save user settings and bool tools will show up over here under your tools tab Right. Well, that's what I said. You know, using a Boolean operator, you can you can slice anything with any shape. Um, create a UV sphere. Scale it down. Scale it down. All right. See, tools, the bool tools, slice. I just used a sphere to slice it. So you can use whatever you need to, to, to slice. You can. That's why you could take. Uh, someone that was wanting to create an action figure out of something, you could use Boolean operators. The first thing you'd want to do is go in and create all of your uh, joints as separate objects. Then go into your model and use your Boolean operators to slice out the piece where you need to put the joint in and then the boolean operator again to connect the joint that you have as a separate piece um, giving you a, a for instance wait open recent uh, BSV but the hinges I used on the doors here I keep them I keep them around as a blank which I was messing around with something there. But I keep them around as a blank and I first use a copy of that hinge, that blank hinge to slice out the hole where I'm going to join it so it's exactly the right size. Then I get it lined up and Boolean operator to join it. So I, I created this door with no hinge in it at all. And then I took this and subtracted it from 
the door. So it left a perfect cutout. But I made a duplicate of it before I cut it out. And then I took the duplicate one and joined it to the, the door. And the result is a perfectly functioning hinge that is printed in place. So yeah, just line up the hinge, the, which this was again for a, another part that I was playing with. Oh yeah, okay, there it is. You can see there, that's the part I was starting to design and work on. That's for a civilian version. Yes, yes, it's it's no big deal. It's just sliding some vertices around. Or scaling in some cases. So yeah, like the thing that... Uh, I was working on here. I get ready to do it. I will make the cutout necessary for that here. And then I will clear that out, make that a empty block. And then I will join the hinge into it. And then I'll have all the clearance around the hinge that's necessary. But using a very similar process, that's where, where you could take, you know, say somebody had had modeled up a statue. And you would take and cut the head off and then carve into the head using a Boolean operator the slot for that shape. And then you put that, using a Boolean operator, join that shape onto the neck of the thing that you just sliced off. And then when you printed the two out, they should marry together perfectly because they're based off of, based off the same piece. You just scaled one up slightly larger than the other so that there was a little bit of tolerance there. All right, guys, well, we're reaching the... Uh, the two hour mark of the stream so I'm going to say uh, thank you guys for joining me um, I know everyone who, who stopped in and commented today at least is uh, subscribed but uh, anybody watching this in the future or if there's somebody lurking in the background there that is not subscribed if you uh, you know want to learn some stuff about blender if you want to uh, design your own stuff for 3d printing um, subscribe ring the bell we do this every Tuesday and Thursday um, appreciate you guys hanging out John thank you sir for uh, for being here and uh, tune in tomorrow with Mike Whaley in the morning Clyde is 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 lurking but he's also subbed um, appreciate you guys very much thank you for uh, hitting the thumbs up button down there Thank you for uh, tuning in and watching. We sure, you know, I sure appreciate it here, and uh, we'll see you. We'll see you next time. All right. So I'll see you guys. I guess Tuesday. Later, all.